Right, you should just got a little recording notice. And uh, again, my name is Todd, uh, and I am the program manager at NASA's Education Resource Center at the Katherine Johnson IV and V facility in Fairmont, West Virginia. And uh, we're going to talk about podcasting. And uh, one of the things that's kind of fascinating to me is is that I started giving this presentation uh, back in 2006. Uh, teaching teachers uh, and other educators how to develop their own podcasts. And uh, in fact, the last time I gave this to a, a large audience was in 2010. And so uh, when we were racking our brains uh, with my team, trying to think of what trainings can we deliver that does not require equipment and hands-on activities, and I said, well, you know, I, I used to teach them this podcasting thing, and uh, we advertise it. And, there was a great deal of interest, in fact. So uh, it was kind of a surprise to me. I figured nowadays, you know, over 10 years later, everyone has podcasts and everyone knows how to make podcasts and, and, and utilize these technologies. But uh, it seems like there's there's still uh, an interest in it, which which makes me feel good. But uh, we're going to talk about basically what a podcast is. Um, the NASA podcasts are available to you, and uh, we'll also demonstrate how you can make a podcast. I'm going to focus on audio. So if you were excited about video podcasting, um, you can definitely do that, but I don't have time in the context of this training. There's just so many, so many things to play with in, in video. And I, as a teaching tool, I believe fundamentally that having students write the script for and uh, learn the nonlinear editing in an audio podcast is gonna be more meaningful uh, in terms of their knowledge and retention and less distracting. It's kind of like, you know, you know, the kids get lost when they make PowerPoints because they get all the animations going on and stuff and they, they're not focusing on the content and the information as much. Um, so anyway, that's, that's just uh, what we're gonna do. So, so how can podcasts be used in STEM education is my first question. And, um, uh, and, and to kind of show an example of, of how we can use that is, I don't know how many of you uh, have, how to teach or address the big question that kids often have, maybe even more parents have it than adults is, what's the deal with Pluto? Like, <laughs> why is Pluto not a planet? So feel free to chime in. We're a small group. You guys can unmute. You can type in the chat box. Why is Pluto not a planet? So that's a question. Go ahead text or, or, or um, unmute. I have a question for you. Yes. Is the wise anyone who live in this space? Anybody yeah. know why we live in this space? Or outer space or the aliens? So, so Kevin, it sounds like you're asking a, a question about people living in space. Um, so I, right now there's a question for you, which is uh, do, why isn't Pluto a planet? And I was wondering if you have any, any ideas why that is. And I'll get back to other questions like that later. It's kind of off topic. It's hard. It, it's not because Neil deGrasse Tyson said so, um, but uh, I'm gonna answer your question using a podcast. Uh, well, there, oh, Ellen, that was a good answer. And Jassity, that's an excellent answer too, yes. So size matters. Um, so let's see here, I need to switch my share, my share, give me one second here. Okay, so let me go full screen with this. Ask an astronomer. Why isn't Pluto a planet? So are you hearing the audio? Because I there is a, I think I have to potentially hit a button saying share computer sounds. Okay. I hit the button. More. When we ask the question of what is and isn't a planet, we're really just talking about how we define the word planet. In ancient times, we didn't really need a definition. Astronomers noticed five star-like objects, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, that didn't move around with the other stars, but seemed to wander through the sky. The word planet comes from an ancient Greek word that meant wanderer. 
Eventually, we figured out that the Earth is a planet too, orbiting around the Sun just like the others. And that was pretty much it for the solar system until the age of telescopes. The next planet to be discovered was Uranus in 1781, followed by Neptune in 1846. These planets are huge, but just too far away for ancient astronomers to see. But did you know that in 1801, astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi discovered another planet? <laughs> or so he thought. Piazzi found a spherical body about 600 miles across, orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. The planet, which is smaller than our moon, was called Ceres. In this case, it wasn't too distant to see, but too small. The problem, however, was that Ceres had buddies. Lots of them. The very next year, a smaller object named Pallas was discovered, and two years after that, another named Juno. We now know about thousands of similar bodies. Instead of adding thousands of new planets to the solar system, astronomers decided it made more sense to group these objects together. They named a new class of objects, asteroids, and Ceres got demoted. Something similar has just happened to Pluto. Astronomer Clyde Tombaugh stumbled across Pluto in 1930, but since then, its status as a planet has been called into question too. First of all, Pluto's orbit is strange, wildly offset from the other planets, and even intersecting the orbit of Neptune. Also, it turns out that Pluto isn't bigger than the Earth, as Tombaugh initially thought. Instead, it's got a huge moon nearby. In fact, some people called it a binary planet or a double planet. And, just like with Ceres, astronomers discovered that Pluto isn't alone. Beginning in the early 1990s, they started finding other objects similar to Pluto. Some, like Quawar and Sedna, were almost as big. Then in 2005, astronomers announced that they'd found an object named Eris even bigger than Pluto. So, are all these planets? Astronomers wondered the same thing. And in August of 2006, astronomers from all over the world met and finally decided on a formal definition of a planet. Pluto and its buddies didn't make the cut, and now they're known as dwarf planets. <laughs> but don't be upset that Pluto isn't a full-fledged planet anymore. Instead, think how exciting it is that there's still so much to learn about the solar system, and that science can continue to set the record straight, even when our initial ideas turn out to be wrong. For Ask an Astronomer, I'm Dr. Robert Hurt at the Spitzer Science Center. Okay, so I'm back and um, just want to know if you learned anything during that podcast. And if, if so, you can, again, unmute or you could type in the chat box. What, what's something that you didn't know that you learned about uh, Pluto? So I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you can hear me on that. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, Jonathan. I'm sorry. I just joined in. I just been trying to get in. I've listened the best I can. Me and my teacher were trying to get in as best we can. Okay. And I okay, could... John. They were just talking about uh, the definition of planets, all of which you learned from your uh, number one science teacher. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so the big point here is that, um, you know, you can use podcasts to bring an expert into your classroom to help answer questions that students might be having. And while we want to make, we want to believe that our science teachers, like myself included, are, you know, sometimes the authority figure in the classroom and, and students should trust us. I think that we get more validity when we talk about um, some of the scientific developments and we can bring in like a guest speaker. And so it's so, it's so hard to coordinate guest speakers and get them to come in the classroom and stuff like that. Or, but when you use podcasts, they're pre-recorded. So you can basically use that expert whenever you want them to help answer the question. In this case, I use this often to teach the scientific method. When people, you know, we have end up in discussions about I believe this, or you know, this is scientific. This is a scientific proof or something. Um, I like to say that you know what makes science science is that we're always testing it, and we're always willing to question it, and if need be, redefine things. And so this is an example where 
the definition of planet was pretty loose. So we tightened up the definition. But needless to say, we've used a podcast to, uh, to teach topic. So when I started teaching podcasting over 10 years ago, people said, well, I, you need one of those iPod things. I don't even know they make iPods anymore. Um, but uh, you don't need an iPod. Uh, I also have people tell me that, you know, I thought that's just for the iTunes and Apple computers. You know, I can't, I'm a Microsoft person, so I can't do it. And that's obviously not true. Um, and uh, maybe I can't make podcasts because I don't have this special video software. And I think that the, the current generation X, Y, and Z, they, they're very uh, comfortable making, you know, videos of uh, video games they're playing and sharing that on YouTube. I mean, I mean, most kids, I think, who are, you know, middle school and up probably have their own YouTube channels and stuff. So it's not, it's not that hard for them. And, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to use podcasts, it has to make sure it aligns with my content standards. And uh, I want to say that it, you know, I just covered a whole bunch of standards right now using that Ask an Astronomer video. Uh, and a misconception often is, well, I make podcasts. Yeah, I post things on YouTube. That's not, a, that's not a podcast. And so I want to sort of make sure everyone's aware of the definition of podcast. So essentially a podcast is an audio or a video file that is automatically downloaded to your computer um, through a subscription and the technical um, tool that use that does that for you is called rss or really simple syndication and uh, technically that uses uh, something called an xml file so like html is a type of you know language that controls what a web page looks like xml is a, a computer language, extensible markup language that uh, controls behind the scenes things, such as you know I, your iTunes, your pod catching software, uh, learning from a website like NASA when the latest episode of Ask an Astronomer was was downloaded. So, just to just to reiterate this subscription based concept, uh, basically, if you wanted to get your you know your latest magazine, you could get in your car and drive to the store and you know, one at a time with your mask on, go pick out that magazine and do that every single month. Or you could just fill out the little, you know, postcard and get a subscription and uh, it comes to your mailbox automatically. So uh, with a podcast, that's essentially the same concept. You could go to a website like Ask an Astronomer has a website. You could click on watch videos there. But if you subscribe through a pod catching software tool like iTunes, then every time a new episode is uploaded, it's automatically downloaded to your device, whether that be a phone, tablet, or a computer. So let's look at some examples of podcasts that NASA has. So if you go to nasa.gov, you click on the downloads, and then there, there is podcasts. It's become a very, very popular way of distributing multimedia content now. And uh, some of the ones that I recommend highly are NASA Edge, NASA 360, um, those ones are both educational and they're about what's going on at NASA. Uh, I think what they also have unique about them is, is they're not just a talking head. They're not, you know, it's just someone talking about a specific topic. Uh, they have a really unique and informal uh, kind of format. And so it's, it, they're fun to listen to, they're engaging. If you wanna learn about current events, like what's happening at NASA. Now I, I believe, um, let's see if I pull my, my list of participants up here. I want to say it was Christopher or Nicholas. Someone, someone asked, uh, are, we, are people in space right now? So if you want to learn more about people who are in space, then what you could do is you could go to the This Week at NASA and, and learn all about what's going on. In fact, we have many people in space right now. We have astronauts that are aboard the International Space Station. So uh, that's and following back up to that question that was asked earlier. And you could use a podcast to learn about them. All of our missions right now, the big missions we have going on are Artemis. Artemis is where we're going to go back to the moon. We're going to develop a, a big rocket, a heavy payload rocket. And uh, that's the SLS. And then we're going to um, put into orbit a station around the moon. And from that station, we're gonna go down and land on the moon and create habitats. And what we learn from that, we'll take with us to Mars. So that's the big mission going on right now. You can learn about the Artemis project. Um, in the mission updates, for example. 
and there's a lot of science. So anyone teaches science, uh, you can, uh, you know, particularly if you're teaching, teaching physics or astronomy topics, uh, any kind of space science, you're going to find a lot of offerings from NASA on, on a variety of topics, such as the Invisible Network. And that one talks about radio astronomy. Very, very kind of special to me here, since uh, we have the largest steerable radio telescope in the world at the Green Bank Observatory in Green Bank, West Virginia. Uh, th these are some of the educational podcasts I alluded to earlier. NASA 360 and Edge are really fun to listen to. Uh, NASA X, Ask an Astronomer, is no longer being updated, um, but um, they're not making new episodes, but the, I think they might have like 30 or 40 episodes. They're all amazing. I personally downloaded them all and use them when I teach astronomy topics. Irreverent Astronomy is a, like a comedy show about astronomy, so it's, it's uh, funny. And Blue Shift is, uh, you know, a science one about um, observations in space. So how do you, how do you use podcasts? How do you, how do you get them? I keep, you know, I mentioned uh, RSS and XML and, and subscriptions. So, so here's the easy one, two, three steps. Number one, download some sort of software that you can use to uh, download and catch podcasts. You almost definitely have this already on any device, whether it be a computer or a tablet or phone. Uh, it, it very likely already exists, but if it doesn't, you can just download a copy. Then you get to find podcasts and subscribe to them. And but it's important to realize that you need to manage, manage your subscription. If you don't do that, for example, my phone is pretty big. I think I have 64 gigs in my phone, but I've run out of space in my phone. Between photos and then podcasts, um, I've had to delete things. So if you don't manage your subscription, you'll find your device potentially filling up fast. So there's not just one pod catching software package, you know, there's, you know, maybe a dozen different ones, but the most popular one uh, by far, like, like way more popular than all the other ones combined, I think is iTunes. Um, but, you know, Google has one as well. Um, Juices is, is, is used, Doppler. So, but if you go to uh, iTunes, it runs on a Mac or a PC and you can then catch podcasts. So how do you find a podcast? So number one option, is go to a website. So maybe um, your church might have a podcast that they're, they're distributing, particularly today in the COVID crisis days. Um, if you're doing you know, sermons and stuff, they might uh, have a podcast that you can go to the church website, click on it and find it, or maybe go to the NASA website, search around, find podcasts. Uh, B, the way I'd recommend doing it, is actually use your podcatching software to look at and review all the different uh, podcasts that are posted and available for a subscription. So here I am in, in iTunes and I've searched for podcasts and I've searched for NASA. And then what I'm going to do is on the right hand side, I'm going to filter and make sure I'm only looking at podcasts and only looking at uh, NASA as an agency or de developer because there, there are some uh, rock bands or something that use NASA and they're not the agency. Uh, so now that I found a podcast I like using my podcatching software, there should be a button right there that says subscribe. Clicking that button is going to tell my podcatching software package that I like this podcast. I want you to download the most recent episode. Uh, and uh, usually that's the default on most of the software packages that it will, it will not download all of them. There's 30 or 40 or hundreds of episodes. It's not going to download. All. It should just download the one, but you can manage how that's handled. So uh, again, the typical is it'll download the most recent one and it'll play them from the newest to the oldest and it'll often delete an episode after you listen to it. So it doesn't take up space in your device. But if you want to have access to all the NASA 360, um, you know, vodcast was a video podcast. It's kind of, it's kind of an old name. It's gone out of vogue, but um, you could tell to download and keep all of them. Don't, don't delete them. So that's, the, that's the, uh, the part where you have a chance to um, kind of manage how your software handles your podcast. So probably, I want to say like eight, eight or nine years ago, I was at a conference and talking to some of my NASA colleagues. And uh, a friend of mine who I, who I knew said she had, a, she had a new job. And her job was managing this project called NASA's DIY Podcast. And I said, oh, oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. What is it? Because um, I teach podcasting. 
And she said, well, uh, basically the idea is that uh, we're going to create a giant archive uh, based on science topics of audio and video clips, images, and everything you need um, to have students create their own scientific podcast accessing NASA scientific data. I said, oh my gosh, that's, that's, that's genius. And so it's, it's set up to give you access to the files you need um, that you could use to piece together your, your very own uh, program. And, and, and of course, the idea here is students would do this. So first you download your audio or video clip, then, and this is essential to meeting your standards as well as making this an educational activity. Uh, plus it's also best practices for anyone who's in the field of audio or video editing. You never just off the cuff try to, uh, uh, you know, speak a podcast for me or you'll be stuttering and stuff like I am now. Um, you make sure you write a script down, you rehearse your script, um, and then you practice it and probably do it a few times. Um, and then even after that, you still have to edit it. So, and then of course, the, 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 what makes the podcast, you have to share it. So uh, when you go to the website, you choose your topic first, like recycling, then you can find both video and audio clips that are available. In this case, we would download an audio clip. And then what you're gonna do is uh, you could listen to them and save them to your local machine. So uh, that's usually a right click. Uh, Macs, by the way, have a right click. You just click on the right side of the, of the um, touchpad, or if you put a, put a three button mouse in, they, they work the same as any PC. So, um, or you can two finger click, but basically you, you download the file to your downloads folder. Then here's, uh, if it's an audio, you should type out you know, the script, have, have the students do all the research on the topic they're doing. Um, they could create different characters, they'll come and go. Maybe they have two or three students assigned to work on this together and one person could interview the other. Uh, if it's a video podcast, then we use something called a storyboard. And so you'd have the students draw out each scene of what they're gonna have. But again, it, the preparation is what really makes it uh, a good product. Now, the tool that I love to use that I've been demonstrating for many years is uh, called Audacity. And it's been updated, you know, it's even better than it was when I started doing it. And it's called a non-linear editing tool, meaning that you're not stuck on a reel-to-reel -reel tape like uh, in, in old times. Um, and you have to like literally cut the tape and splice in pieces. You can take clips and drag them around the timeline and put them wherever you want them. Um, you could throw in background music. You could have two or three or four different, you know, uh, people that are being recorded. And all those files can be moved around, adjusted, the audio levels adjusted very easily. And then it can export those um, out as an MP3, which is a compressed audio file that's appropriate for sharing. So here you can see. Um, there's a NASA clip that I have in the top line right there, the top track. Then here I have a, a student who's been recorded uh, talking. And then on the third track down below, I have some sort of music going on in the background. So once you've edited your file and you've moved the tracks around, you've, you've changed all the levels, you've played it, you like how it is, it's been edited, you've you trimmed off pieces you don't want and stuff. Uh, then you want to save the project and that allows you to edit it again in the future and then this, the last thing you do is you're going to export it as an mp3 um, and so that's on the export feature now for videos uh, it's the same the same exact process except that you're going to download the, the the video clip they do give you a preview uh window so you can watch them like a kind of like a youtube sort of looking window um and then you can use iMovie or Movie Maker, or there's other products as well. But uh, essentially, you would bring the clips you want into your editing tool. Um, you, you know, move those clips around. You, you could add in your own video clip using your camera. And then you want to export that out as an MP4, which is a compressed video format. And so here it is in the Windows. And this might be a dated slide because uh, I don't have a, I don't have a, a Windows computer to work on. So I, I couldn't get new screen captures. I'm not I mean, I'm 100% sure what the current version of Movie Maker looks like in uh, Windows, but that's what it did look like when I made the clip. 
And uh, in this example, I had to export it out as a WMV file. So here's what makes it a podcast. So you, you've made your audio or video file. It's saved to your local computer. Um, just uploading it to YouTube or something means it's you know on the internet, but it's not a podcast. So you need two things to in order to have it be a podcast. One, you have to have a computer on the internet that you upload your file to. So it has to be stored on a, uh, a, a website accessible computer. Second, you have to create an XML file that allows podcatching software products to read it and say, oh, here's, you know, there's 20 episodes in Todd's technology tips, or whatever podcast it is. And the most recent one is this title, and here's how you can download it. So uh, in old days, you could write it yourself. Um, but nowadays, I'm going to show you there's much, much easier ways to upload and have your XML file and your subscribe button all created automatically for you. So um, RSS, really simple syndication, I mentioned earlier, and it uses that extensible markup language. Um, so it's, it's a, a text-based language. And so you can see that, you know, some places refer to that still as the XML, but that's what your iTunes reads. Now, uh, when I started doing this 10 years ago, I was using a, a website called Podbean. Um, and Podbean is known for hosting a lot of educational podcasts. Um, so you probably want to be a little bit particular about where you put your podcast on your school server would work, you know, but uh, these sites make it really easy because they can allow you a limited space for free. Um, if you're, you know, going to put hundreds of podcasts up there for your whole school or district, you might want to, or for a bunch of classes, you might want to have a paid subscription. But regardless, it makes it easy because it allows you to um, essentially just create the descriptions for your podcast in a form and then upload the file and publish it right there in, in one fell swoop. So podbean.com is probably my favorite example. So uh, the, the quick things to remember are that podcasts are a powerful educational tool because it lets you do what you want, you know, when you want and where you want. In other words, I can bring Robert Hurd in to answer the question, why is the Pluto planet, you know, right when I'm teaching my uh, class on the scientific method or if we're teaching uh, you know, astronomy topics. So I fundamentally believe that uh, students should create their own knowledge. Um, I'm, I'm sort of a constructivist in that sense. And I think that having students generate their own podcasts is an effective way to leverage 21st century skills, um, have students generate their own knowledge in, an, in a very engaging way. Plus during the COVID crisis, this might be a perfect time for students to have a little more free time in order to work on projects you know, since they're not seeing classes, and they could uh, produce these products that could be shared among other students. So it could be a really neat way to have students teach one another um, through an assignment that the teacher could uh, provide to them. And of course, uh, I work at the NASA facility, uh, and so I want to emphasize that, you know, NASA produces hundreds and hundreds of podcasts, um, and it's probably one of our most common ways to distribute information. So that's, that's the quick overview before I go into uh, sort of a, a hands-on how to do it. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it. But before I do that, do you guys have any questions? So we're gonna- I little... don't have any questions. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that you're all still awake. And you've you've heard me, but no no questions. I, I did, but I don't have any questions for you, and I'm not sure if my teacher does. No, usually that's okay. she does have usually one or two questions. <laughs> no, I'm good right now, John. Thanks. All right, so now I'm going to change gears and go to a, a kind of a live demonstration of how this works. So let me just change my share. And um, let's go to the whole desktop. So if someone could just confirm that you're able to see um, NASA DIY podcast, you can. I can see it. Great, thanks, Jonathan. So uh, here I am, and um, 
explain this is a kind of I gave a, a quick overview of this during the PowerPoint part, but uh, it gives you the steps download, write your script, record it, edit, and share. Um, so that's that's the basic principles here. So under here it says topics. And we can say you know, careers at NASA. So we could explore careers. And then it's going to have audio or video clips on the left hand side. And here's a scientist explaining, you know, Karen Burton explaining something. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the audio. They give you the transcript as well. So you can see exactly what was said. My name is Karen Burton. I'm Assistant Manager of Human Resources here at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Um, and so, um, and I just hiring new employees. Let me see if there's a more interesting clip. <laughs> Good schoolwork is important. So, I, so the question might be like, what's important to work at NASA? I get asked that all the time. So I'm going to download the audio clip. A good school or work record is extremely important. Good attendance, good grades, neat work, and also arrive on time and well-dressed for your interview. Okay, so that was a preview. What I should have done is right-clicked and download that file as, and I can put it wherever I want then, in this case, um, it's, it's called something exploration. It's got some weird numbers there. And I'm going to put it on my, uh, my desktop, I think, just so I can find it easy. Great. So there's that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch my Audacity software. And uh, Audacity is a free software package you can download. Um, it runs on Macs or PCs. And um, I'm, I, just, I just love this software. I think it's super cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, import the clip that we just had. So it's an audio clip. And it should be on my desktop. And it's called Exploration Careers MP3. So I'll import that one. And I should be able to play it and hear it. I don't think sixth or seventh grade is too early to begin thinking about your career. By the time you reach high school, you should be taking classes that are going to prepare you for your future. Also, so I, I, must, I, think I, I think I previewed one and then clicked on a different one. So it's, it sounds like the question is, you know, is middle school too early to start thinking about my career at NASA? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead um, and I'm going to mute this clip for a second. I'm gonna record myself. Mary, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Actually, let me not do that in the same place. Let me make a new clip. Minimize that. I can't see my menu bar, which is really annoying. Okay, so we're going to add a new track. And on this track, I'm going to record my voice. Hi, Mary. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Is seventh or eighth grade too early to start thinking about a career at NASA? So there's my part that I'm gonna do. Okay, so I can play that. Hi, Mary, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Now what I'm gonna do is there's a tool that lets me move tracks. This, this tool right here, lets me take a, a clip and slide it. So I, I can move where it is in the timeline. So now we're gonna start from the beginning and I'm gonna unmute Mary. Hi, Mary. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Is seventh or eighth grade too early to start thinking about a career at NASA? I don't think sixth or seventh grade is too early to begin thinking. Okay, so that's how now we have two audio clips there. But what if I wanted some background music in here? So I'm going to import another audio clip. And uh, we're going to, let's see, find some music. And you'd be careful if you use proprietary music, 
um, for educational purposes, you're allowed 30 seconds of uh, a clip without breaking copyright laws. Um, there, it, there is lots of open source music available that you can get that's just like cool background sounds. Um, so I'd recommend that if you're going to be doing more than just a 30 second clip. So let's see. So by importing that clip, it's a very long, it's a full song, right? So let me, let me go ahead and I'm gonna, you know, mute my other clips for a second, play this. All right, that's pretty cool, but I don't really need a whole lot of that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my other clips and slide them a little bit down. Then I'm gonna, Go ahead and use my selection tool. I'm gonna to select the vast majority of, of this song. And I'm going to then just delete that. So I've, I've kind of truncated it. Now, one of the tools I love is this one here called the envelope tool. It allows me to put little, what I call pivot points. So I can put a little dot there and we'll dot there and what it lets me do is ramp the music down to very soft so it changes the audio level so it starts loud and can go soft and goes back up again at the end so i've kind of timed it out so it will um to make these tracks a little bit smaller so you can see so that's when we have our talking going on and our music will start off loud and then get softer during the talking part so let's unmute everyone and uh, see how it sounds. So that's unmuted, unmuted. We'll rewind and play from the beginning. Hi, Mary. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Is second or eighth grade too early to start thinking about a career at NASA? All right, so clearly the audio of my music track is still way too loud. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that down more and maybe even bring it down to almost nothing and hope that that does it. And there's also um, effects that you can do. You can take a track and you can, you know, um, change that track using one of these preset uh, different effects. So let's let's rewind so I did a better job now. Hi Mary, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Is seventh or eighth grade too early to start thinking about a career at NASA? I don't. Okay, so it's better, but I'm I think I'm just gonna take my sound down to zero. Hi, Mary. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Is seventh or eighth grade too early to start thinking about a career at NASA? I don't think sixth or seventh grade is too early. All right. So uh, there we go. But I created a clip. It's not a wonderful podcast, but I think you understand the concept. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save our project. Okay. And it's going to be an AUP file, which means I can edit it again. So we'll save that. Then we're gonna go ahead and say file, export this as an MP3. So it's gonna put it um, on my desktop, I hope. Is that where I was? No, on downloads, we'll put it on the desktop just for convenience. I don't even see my desktop. Here it is, desktop. And I can change some of the settings here in terms of the quality, but uh, we're just gonna leave it in stereo and Hit save. So I'll use all the defaults. And it just said I'm going to flatten you down to a single track. When you get this meta tags here, um, so we don't want to be Allison Krauss. We're going to be Todd Ensign, careers at NASA. I don't need an album title. I need a track. 
2020. I'm just going to delete a few of these things. Another reason I shouldn't have imported a an actual official soundtrack. <laughs> Should I use a uh, an open source soundtrack? I wouldn't have had those things already added and ended in, into the metadata. Okay, so it's saving it. And now, since we're on my screen share, I'm going to change gears here and go to Podbean.com. I already have an account created, and you can create a free account. I'm going to log in. So, uh, and as a teacher, I've created multiple accounts uh, just using different email addresses that I, I had, like, you know, NASA1 at Gmail, et cetera. But um, if students aren't able to use email, but because you need an email to log in. But I'm going to go ahead here and click new episode to my podcast that I have. It says for my free account, I still have four hours and four minutes left, but I don't, I don't need to upload. I don't need to upgrade. So choose a file. So I'm going to choose my MP3 file I just saved. Choose that. And here's where it's going to put the information that goes in the XML file. So it's a title. Okay. Here's at NASA is the title. And... I interviewed Mary from MSFC, which is Marshall Space Flight Center, about careers at NASA. And I hit publish now. Like, little, literally couldn't be easier. Okay, so it's, it's uh, uploaded. So there's a site, a website that allows me to see all my podcasts. So this is the public version of my, um, my podcast, so careers at NASA. So this is now on the internet. Hi, Mary. Thanks for taking the time to talk. So the, the, the cool thing here is now we're not, we're not listening to this from my computer. We're listening to this from the Podbean website. But going here and clicking on it is one way to access it, but it wouldn't be a podcast unless there was a subscribe button. So right there is a subscribe button. So it says RSS feed. So if I click on that, it says you can get this on your phone or whatever. This is the actual feed, the XML file that can go into iTunes or into your phone uh, or, or, or other devices. So that's how I'm able to subscribe to this podcast. So I could go to my iTunes and what we could do is go to podcasts and we could actually, um, let's see add a new podcast here, subscribe to a podcast. It should do it automatically once I click on that though. All right, so one glitch is not, it's not automatically jumping to it or, or uh, subscribing to it, so. There's other file, subscribe to podcast. It wants the XML. So that's a slightly annoying step, but once I do that, the weird thing is that it's going to um, actually read the XML from the website, from Podbean, and then it should start to subscribe and download the episodes. So you can see these are all episodes that were um, downloaded from class or available from classes that I taught before. So here's Mr. Zarowski's class. Sounds like he didn't do a very good audio there. Welcome to the NASA IBM facility. So there's a, a whole series of podcasts, you know, in your podcast feed. So that gives you an example of how to 
create your own audio podcast, um, edit it, upload it, and uh, even to download it yourself. So again, um, are there any questions about how to use Audacity to generate an audio podcast or upload it using Podbean? I don't have any questions. Do you, Tony? Uh, yes, actually I do. I was wondering, uh, Todd, do you recommend getting a special microphone um, so we don't have audio issues like, uh, like what we just heard? Uh, no, actually I think that problem was because they were using an external microphone. Um, okay. The, the microphone on my laptop is, you know, what we're using right now. So if you can hear me pretty well, then uh, I, I think it's probably adequate. So un unless, okay, unless yeah, you sound great. <laughs> if you have a desktop, okay, computer, then I would recommend a headset with a microphone. If you have a laptop or you're doing this on another device that has an embedded microphone in it, it's probably fine. Like right now I have a laptop, but my headphones have a microphone in it. That's good. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that for sure. It might be better quality. It, it might not be that. I mean, uh, my, my Mac is a pretty expensive device. It probably has a, a pretty good, microphone so you get what you pay for if you have a high quality microphone then it might be better than your laptop okay thank you okay so again um this is my email address that i have up on the on the screen there and just wondering if you guys have any other questions for me, because uh, we have 10 more minutes before the hour is up and I'm happy to, to entertain any, anything that you might be interested in learning about, you know, NASA, or if you, maybe you had questions that were off topic, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll stop the recording.